boxing team before Engel, not Prince Nassim. Engel went to the Olympics in Barcelona in 1992 as the flyweight representative. Engel with a two-inch height advantage. They weighed in within a half pound of the limit. Tonight, Engel weighs 137 to Prince's 136 as they enter the ring. Six and a half inch reach advantage for Engel, but will that help him to stay away from Hamed's power shots? Punch that numbers, Larry. These are the numbers from their last fights. You can see they're vaguely similar, but of course, Hamed is a much bigger puncher. Interestingly, Ingle, although he has a reach advantage, is a very aggressive fighter and doesn't use that reach advantage. And here are the, here are the power punches, the significant edge that Hamed has. It's a significant edge because he is unorthodox, throws punches from awkward angles that opponents frequently don't see. And rules of the bout from the avid traveler who has eaten fish and chips three times in the last two days, Harold Letterman. <laughs> the Prince the same Hamed, Paul Engel fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the standardized rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Perhaps the most interesting part of this walkout is that Engel threatens to do it twice tonight if he's kept waiting too long for Hamed in the ring. But it looks like he's got some stuff going on for himself. <laughs> Trying to upstage Prince Nassim's anticipated, customary, overly elaborate entrance. All Engel produces his own theatrics. Well, he's called, calls himself the Hunter, so I guess we just saw some machine, bull, machine gun bullets outline his attempt here to upstage the Prince. I like it. Oh, you're becoming a fan of these showy entrances, uh, Larry? I like showy entrances. I think that's something boxing can borrow from Rathlin as long as what goes on in the ring is honest. <laughs> well, I wonder if uh, Frank Maloney has started his stopwatch yet. Ingalls manager Frank Maloney says he'll put a stopwatch on his own fighter's entrance, and then they will, in effect, give the Prince the same amount of time to get into the ring, and if he doesn't get into the ring within the allotted time period established by the stopwatch, then Ingall will, as Larry mentioned, leave the ring, go back to the dressing room, and wait to come back out again after the Prince has already made his entrance. We'll see if they'll follow through with that plan. Frank Maloney, the man who is ostensibly holding the stopwatch, you'll recognize as also the manager of World Heavyweight Champion Lennox Lewis. Lewis isn't here tonight, incidentally. He spent the weekend in New York for the United States Boxing Writers Association dinner. The Prince called Engel ugly in one of the fight promotion ads, and Maloney said the Prince must not have any mirrors in his house. Well, there it is. Engel makes his entrance in a fatigue outfit befitting his paramilitary approach to training. They, he calls himself Jim the Yorkshire Hunter. He says hunting gear. He recognized referee Joe Cortez, one of the finest referees in the sport, as he stands in front of Engel and begins individual instructions. There's the record for Paul Engel. 21 wins, no losses, no draws, 15 KOs. A lot of people say, well, his most significant opponent was Billy Hardy. Prince Nassim knocked out Billy Hardy in one round. And we can see Maloney saying they took six minutes to come into the ring. He's got a stopwatch in his hand. And there's Maloney holding the stopwatch, so... You presume that Maloney has now established for purposes of this camp. Well, you know, and he has a point. He says, what the time limit is. I've warmed up my fighter in the dressing room. We're coming out here. It's just not fair to have him freeze for 10 or 15 minutes. You saw what happened to Kevin Kelly in Madison Square Garden as he stood in the ring and watched and waited and watched and waited for the Prince finally to enter. 
But I would, like, I would like to have an opponent leave the ring, make it walk way back out and come out again. That would be great. So I'm at you to try to exploit that. So you think they, they, they'd be cutting off their noses to spite there their face are. if they do what Maloney plans? George, it's not that long of a walk. Yeah, but that's the kind of walk, an emotional walk that you don't want your fighter to do but once. Fair it's all point. about emotions. Now, Prince Nassim, incidentally, well aware of Maloney's announced plan to pull his fighter out of the ring and a, a master of gamesmanship, or at least certainly he sees himself that way, has not yet left his dressing room. I guess he's daring Maloney and Engel to follow through on their threat. Last Halloween in Atlantic City, Nassim cut short his entrance by several planned minutes. Seemed to sort of cut it off in midstream and just walk directly to the ring as if to say, I, I'm a little tired of the show this evening. Later admitted that he was out of sorts coming into the fight. He knew that he was arguing with his trainer. He said that he was poorly nourished and not well conditioned for the fight and also on the wrong time clock because he had only gotten to the United States four days prior to the assigned date in Atlantic City. And maybe that had something to do with his cutting short the entrance. Maybe he knew that he wasn't about to produce one of those explosive signature performances. Well, I think Wayne McCullough had more to do with it than he did. Yep. If Engel is as tough as McCullough, we could have some fun here tonight. So Maloney, apparently timing Hamed's entrance starting now. And that would seem to indicate that in a couple minutes, Maloney's going to turn to his fighter and say, let's get out of here, and they're going to leave the ring and go back to the dressing room. You know, in the day we fought for the world titles back in the 60s and 70s, we'd have to wait for a long time anyway. The champion would come in, then we'd put the gloves on in the ring, we'd tape the gloves. So there's nothing unusual about waiting in the ring. What about Naz's entrance tonight, uh, Larry? What's in the offing? Well, I have heard it has something to do with automobiles. He's in an automobile buff, although in his his new image as being more now, modest than he used to be, his he's stripped to down ring. to just the an Aston Martin here and a horse there. The Maybe he 
has a new choreographer, as well as a new trainer, a new promoter, and a new manager. All right, let's get to the music, man. Let's just stop dancing. Come on, come on. Let me see some dancing. Prince seems disappointed that he's not getting the response he had hoped to get with this entrance. Well, not a lot of people can see what's going on, to be honest with you. The sight lines aren't such that they can all see it. What do you think he's going to do when he gets to the ring and he turns out to be the only fighter there? Maybe he'll leave. Go back to the dressing room. Oh, here comes Engle. So, George, you would say that he just played into the prince's hands. That's right. That's the, that's the one thing you want to do. You want to be solid. And everything you do is strictly basic. You move out of that, you're moving into his territory, and he's the king of it. In case you haven't seen it before, get ready for the flip over the top rope into the ring. The coup de grace, as it were, of this entrance.